for bite size chemistry, we're going to look at organic synthesis. So this is going to be uh, part one, and there'll be a part two later on. Both parts contain pretty much the same t um, question, type of questions, I should say. Um, so they're not divided up into, um, I do certain parts in part one, and I do certain sections in part two. And it's simply just to make the video a little bit shorter. So, starting off, 2019 question 8. By the way, these always come up on a yearly basis. Okay, so you have plenty of um, plenty of opportunity to practice. So, if we're reading it here, we're only going to look at the organic synthesis part now. And for part B of question 8, it says, Consider the oxidation of alcohols in which no carbon-carbon bonds are broken. And asks for part I there to give the system systematic IEPAC names for two possible organic products of such an oxidation of butanol. Okay. Now, there's two hints in this of where we're at. First off, we need to ask ourselves there if this is a primary or secondary alcohol. That's that's actually critical to um, discovering if it in terms of oxidation, okay, the products. Because if it's a primary alcohol and you oxidize it using an oxidizing agent, you're going to get an aldehyde. Whereas if it's a secondary alcohol and you oxidize it, you're going to get a ketone. Now, it says give the names for two possible organic products. Well, that's actually a hint for us straight away. Because for primary alcohols, if you oxidize it, you're going to get an aldehyde. But if you continue to put in an oxidizing agent, you're going to get a carboxylic acid. So there's actually two products you could get, depending on how much of an oxidizing agent you put in. You can either get an aldehyde or you can get um, a carboxylic acid. Whereas if it's a ketone and you oxidize it, yes, you sorry, not ketone. If it's a secondary alcohol and you oxidize it, you'll get a ketone. And then if you have a ketone and you put in more of an oxidizing agent, you actually won't get anything else. Because as soon as it gets to a ketone, that's it. Now, your second hint that this is a primary alcohol is that it says butan one all there the one indicating where the oh group is at okay it's either at the very end or the beginning depending on which way you want to use it okay we'll say at the very end okay um so butan one all contains oh group at the very end so therefore it must be a primary alcohol now it says uh, the names are you pack names there so if you wrote down aldehyde plus um end carboxylic acid over here you get no marks okay you must state the IUPAC name okay we're dealing with butyl one all now for any oxidation reduction reactions okay the number of carbons does not change that's really really important students get bogged down with this all the time okay get confused with it okay so the number of carbons don't change so if it's going to be but that means there's four carbons so therefore it's going to be butanol And it's going to be butanoic acid. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, you can do butan one al um there if you want. It uh, doesn't really matter. And same for butan one um oic acid. But again, if it's a, a one there, we just assume that's going to be um, it's going to be a primary one. And anyhow, for aldehydes, the what to call it um the functional group has to go to the very end. So it's kind of unnecessary. Okay, so for part two there, we have um, part I done there. It says to draw the structure of an organic product when butane 2 all is oxidized. Okay, butane 2 all straight away is going to be our um, our secondary alcohol. Now, I said it already, the number of carbons don't change. So to write in the carbons here, one, two, three, four, grand. Okay, now next thing, where is the OH going to be attached? It's going to be attached on the second carbon. So I put it on the second carbon here, a little dash like that. Now, wherever the OH was in the butane dual, this is where the double bond to the oxygen, the carbonyl group, we call it, is going to be found. So on the second carbon, we're going to put that double bond O here. That's our carbonyl group. And that's it. Okay, all you have to do now is make sure that you put in the rest of the hydrogens carefully, meaning that each carbon bond, or sorry, each carbon has to have four bonds. Okay. 
okay and i left it off this one here because if you count them up one two three four okay this carbon here has four bonds so just be careful with that okay the number of carbons and hydrogens don't change okay it should be the same number um every time okay um sorry the number of carbons don't change i should say the number of hydrogens will change um, identify clearly which bonds in butene 2 all are broken in this oxidation. Okay, so let's draw out butene 2 all there. Now, whenever I'm doing these and I want to show all the bonds, I make sure that I put in everything. Um, for this, okay, including the OH. Now, I think we have all the hydrogens in it here. So we have to ask ourselves here, which bonds are being um, broken? Now, careful here, it's only which bonds have been broken now. Okay, it's not looking for um, anything else. So, I'm going to identically we can see straight away that there's a hydrogen carbon hydrogen bond here broken okay so i'm just going to highlight that and we can write it down over here carbon hydrogen i might just put thing up here broken bonds or bonds broken better okay so carbon hydrogen is the person is there anything else well there is we can see straight away that um, over here we have our OH group been lost okay so the OH bond here okay it's been lost we have the oxygen is still there okay but the OH bond is actually lost so we can just write it down over here OH bond is broken um, let me see now is there anything else we can say from this There isn't really, that's it, um, looking through it, okay. Um, in the marker scheme, you only needed to have the two of them, um, which was what I have highlighted there. Now, really, you should be highlighting for this one here, for the for this one over here. I'm only showing the bond between the hydrogen here. I should really be highlighting the carbon as well, uh, which I didn't do. So just to be careful with that. Um, but I haven't mentioned over here, so it's it's okay. Um, I actually I prefer having it written down like this, guys, um, simply because um, your highlighting or mightn't be great over here or might be too messy. Okay, just put it down over here as well to the side. Bond's broken and you're good to go. Okay, let's move on to the next one, so guys, because we only had three parts to that one there. Okay, this is 2016 now. Okay, now I did skip a few because they were very similar. Um, so I didn't want to be doing almost exact repeats. And again, we're only going to be looking at A and B. So there's more to this question than just A and B. First off, you're asked to name, you're given a reaction scheme over here, and you're asked to name um, the polymers A and B. Okay, this is a common enough question. Okay, let's start off. So let's find A before we can, um, and B. So we have B over here, and we have A over here. Now, how do we figure out what A is? Well, first of all, Let's look what's over here. 18, and if you add in H2O to us, you're going to get A. And likewise, we have H plus over here, so that's kind of indicating that um, and a, 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 a H plus acidic medium there, and um, and the carboxylic acid gives us an ester. Now, that should be the key one, really. Either of those two you could look at. For this one here, for the, for to solve what A is, this one here is the key for me. Because I know that an alcohol plus a carboxylic acid will give me an ester. That's the only way we can get our esters. Okay, so A has to be an alcohol. Okay, now, that's the um, family name, but it's not the actual IUPAC name. How do I know what um, alcohol it is? Okay, it's obviously going to have to be some form of alcohol. It's going to be methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol. We don't know, okay? So let's go back over here. We have our eteen over here, and if we add H two O to eighteen, okay, hydration reaction, okay, we get our alcohol. Now the number of carbons never change, 
Okay, so that's really, really important here. Okay, the number of carbons don't change. So if I'm dealing with 18, therefore the alcohol must be so ethanol. You've seen this reaction before, except instead of a hydration reaction, you've seen um, a dehydration reaction. Remember for the preparation of etene, you had to use some ethanol inside your boiling tube and you had your aluminium oxide inside there and we made etene. Okay, so A is our ethanol. Okay, what's B? Now B is a polymer, we know that. And it's coming from etene. So when this is the case, all you have to do there is write down poly, then do brackets, etene. That's it. Okay, it could have been, if that was propene over here, it would be polypropene, okay? Um, that, that's all you have to do, okay? Um, just put down whatever poly and whatever it came from, you put down that in brackets. And there's other ways you can name it, you could call it polyteen as well. Um, I don't really care, um, either way is fine. I like it this way though, in the brackets, because it's um, the same naming across the board then. B. Identify substance X, which is used in the conversion of A to E teen. So this is going back to your experiment, and we kind of said it already, um, and that is your aluminium oxide. Okay, so Al2O3. Just a little hint there, guys. If it says identify, you can use either the name or the molecular formula for us. However, if it says to name it, like it does up here, you have to put in the name. If you put in the molecular formula here, you don't get the marks, okay? You're only getting the marks for the actual name. Um, generally, when this comes up, I put in the names as much as possible, including for the identifying ones, okay? Um, but the molecular formula is perfectly fine, and you'll see that in the marker scheme. Okay, what organic reaction type is involved in this conversion? Okay, so what is happening um, in from A to um, 18 over here? Well, you can write it out. There we go, if you're not sure. So we have our ethanol, which is here. And you might have it learnt off, and that's perfectly fine too. Okay, uh, and you're going to your, go to your 18. Like we have here. Okay, so it says to what organic reaction type is involved in this conversion? So this conversion from um, A to 18. Well, let's have a look. We can see here that, oh, we can put our Al2 over 3, from Al2 over 3 over here, which is our catalyst, okay. We can see here that um, we're losing our OH over here, and we're losing a hydrogen over here. However, we're not just losing that, we're swapping it with a double bond over here. Okay, so it's not a complete loss. Okay, and just to bear that in mind. Okay, now, students get confused with this all the time. Okay, so let's just go, go through it in some detail here. If you have more on this side over here, more atoms, than you do on this side over here, well then for is it going to be elimination. Okay, if you have, if you have um, the same number of atoms either side, therefore it's going to be a substitution. And well, obviously there's going to be something that's going to be different on either side. And likewise, if you have less atoms over here than you do over here, okay, then it's going to be an addition. So ask yourself this, how many atoms on the left hand side? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We have 9 atoms on the left hand side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 atoms on the right hand side. It is therefore going to be classed as an elimination reaction okay that's it um that's all you have to do because lots of students are conscious that they have the oh here and the hydrogen here lost but they're swapping it for a double bond so they're not really too sure this is elimination reaction guys okay you have less atoms on this side than you do over this side okay don't overcomplicate that one okay you could have also classified it as a dehydration reaction 
a dehydration reaction is like if you're dehydrated it means you need water okay so dehydration means you don't have water so you're losing water and that's what's actually happening here because your aluminium oxide here has two functions the first function is the catalyst and the second function to act as a dehydrating agent basically what it does is as the ethanol vapor passes over us it captures the oxygen and two hydrogen from us, that's H2O, um, so it remo to remove water, which gives you ethene over here. Okay, next. So we have our organic type used over here. How does the geometry change in its conversion? Well, very simple, guys. Okay, over here we only have single bonds. Okay, alcohols, all alcohols are tetrahedral. Over here we have a double bond. Okay. Um, indicating there that's going to be planar. Remember, if there's a double or a triple bond there, it's going to be planar. Okay, so it's it's asking you for how does the geometry around the carbon atoms change in this con um, in this conversion? Well, you must specifically state that it goes from tetrahedral to planar. Okay, you don't need to show how or anything like that. Not in this question anyhow. Uh, but you must give both. Okay, that's really important. Anytime you ask for a change, you give the before and after. And that's it, guys, for this. Okay, there probably what there was other ones there, but they had to do mechanisms and stuff like that. We're not doing mechanisms in this uh, one. It's just going to be purely under organic synthesis. We look at mechanisms at another stage. Okay, let's continue on. Here we go. So this is 2015, question 8. Okay, so the last one was 2016 there. Um, so we're given three boxes here and we're asked for A and yeah, we're asked to find out what the UPAC names are. So we'll do A now. So give the IUPAC name for A, B and C. Okay, so I'm just going to write them out here. A equals B equals C equals. I think this is the easiest way to write them out. Okay, um, rather than doing them all in a line. Remember, it's your job to make sure that, um, that the examiner can correct this as quick as possible and you're more likely to get um, uh, more marks that way. Okay, so C3H6. Now, I strongly recommend all students to be drawing out these. Okay, you might have a good idea, but in an exam, you know yourselves, guys, that it, the situation changes things. Okay, we make silly mistakes. Drawers out. So I'm going to do it over here. So the first one is three carbons here one two three or told that there's six hydrogens well if i put in all the hydrogens here like so and i'm not gonna draw them in now just yet i'm just gonna show you if i put them in i'll have one two three four five six seven eight hydrogens here so therefore straight away it can't be um an alkane you get too many hydrogens okay so it has to be an alkene well let's just put in a double bond somewhere it doesn't matter where because this there's oh, I'll write that out again. Um, no matter where you put it, the alky the double bond is going to be on the first carbon. And if we put that in our hydrogens now, and remember each carbon atom wants four bonds. So let's just check now what we have. We have carbon one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay. Count up our hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So the first one has to be propene. Propene. Has to be. Okay, next one. Now, you're given a structure like this. And when you're given this, all you have to do is draw out the carbon and hydrogens as you go on. So the first one was CH3. So I write in CH3. These ones just take practice, guys. Hydrogen and hydrogen over here. Next one, we have a CH and then an O. Now, the O is in the middle. Now, how do we, how do we distinguish if it's going to be a ketone or an alcohol? Well, it's actually very, uh, fairly easy to do so. Okay, and I'll tell you how. If, for argument's sake, this one over here said oh, CH and we have an OH there as well. So we have CH. And I went too far there, two seconds. I put in my CH here. Okay, and then the next one says OH. 
while then I put this in an OH over here. And then the next one says CH3. So I put in a CH3 here. Now, how do I know if it's going to be, uh, how do I know that was going to be an, uh, an alcohol rather than a ketone? Well, an alcohol will always have OH in the middle of it. So it'll be OR, C, OH, OR. Okay, and for a secondary alcohol, I should say. If it's going to be a ketone, it will have an OR. An OR could be anything, obviously. C, O, C, OR. Okay, that's the way it'll be represented. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be coming across a um, ketone in the next question, anyhow, the next part of it. So let's just answer this one over here. We have three carbons, so it's going to be pro. And then our alcohol our functional group here is, in the, is on the second carbon. Okay, one, two, three. One, two, three. So no matter what, it's going to be on a two. So it's going to be pro, pan, two, all. That's all. Okay the two indicating where the OH group is found. Our next one is going to be, and again, we just draw it out, CH3. Uh, we've got a COC, okay, so that's important. So if we draw it in, we'll do our COC. Okay, that's where I'm indicating where my, um, my ketone is. And finally, CH3. COC, sorry, sorry, COC, and there was a H3 on the end of it. That makes sense. Um, okay, so now we have to name it. Uh, so it's a ketone, and therefore we know how it has to end at O and E. Okay, pro because it's three carbons, so propanone. Propanone is our naming for it there. And I have all three of them drawn out. Okay, um, you didn't have to, but I find it helps. Okay, so, and it might actually, I'm going to keep them there because they might come in useful for the next one. So we have the naming of them done there now. So let's go on to B here. Let's see what they're asking for. Name the addition polymer formed from compound A. Okay, ignore the addition part there. Really, that doesn't matter for this one here. You're only asked to do the, um, the naming of it. But in that case, all you have to do is do poly... And then you write down what you started off with, okay? And in that case here, it's, there was a propene you started off with because that was what A was, polypropene. And you've got your three marks, okay? And very similar to the last question, actually. C, identify the bonds broken and formed in conversion Y. So this is conversion Y, guys. We're going from C to B. And again, I strongly recommend that you draw these out. So look, we'll start off with C. Now, I'm going to draw a mouse over here, so I'm just going to copy this. Pop it over here, and it's going to B, which was our aldehyde, sorry, our ketone, I should say, excuse me. Our ketone, and I'm gonna pop that over here. My arrow, going that way. Okay, so I break this up into two parts. First off, I say bonds, formed and over here I'll have bonds broken it doesn't matter how you lay it out I just find those two headings really do help and uh, just to focus okay let's start off so and uh, finding out the difference well the very first difference here guys is this one here the carbon to hydrogen here and carbon to hydrogen over here so we can see that we're forming a bond here okay so in that case here I just write down our CH here. That's all you have to do. Okay. Next. Um, I suppose the only other change is over here, isn't it? So instead of having the C to a bond to an oxygen there, and changes to a C um, to an oxygen over here, so that's going to be bond broken. So you just write down your CO here. Okay, if you want to put in your double bond there, you can. Okay, I don't really mind. As long as you have, like, if you want to do like this, you can. Now, I can't stress this enough, guys. Okay, um, that when you're asked to draw bonds broken and formed, and it always states, okay, 
um, identify the bond for open form to init. So obviously it's for all of them. It's looking for all of them. Well, do you see the OH group over here? That actually is a bond. So I should actually be drawing it. That's OH group like this. I'm just going to do it at an angle there just to make things a bit easier. Okay, because we often forget that that O2 hydrogen there is a bond also. So we're looking at this. Can we not see that that OH group here is actually a bond that's been formed? It wasn't over here, and it was over here. So I put down my OH here. Put a bond in between it there. Okay, so we have two bonds formed and one broken. And I think that's all I can see from over here. I'm actually just checking the mark scheme there, and that's all that there was. So again, just to be careful with this one over here to put in everything. Okay, you'd be surprised how often students get that one wrong, unfortunately. So look, we're going to move on to D, and we'll see what that's like. So D say is talk about isomers of compound B can be synthesized from an aldehyde. So let's just an isomer of compound B. Okay, so this is B here, and if that was an isomer. It can form an aldehyde. Now, if it's something, if something is forming an aldehyde, that must mean it is a primary alcohol. Name the isomer compound B and aldehyde, and draw their full structural formulae. That means draw um, both the aldehyde and uh, um, and the isomer of B. And this states how it can be converted. So there's 18 marks with this. That's quite a lot. Okay, first off, okay, an isomer compound B can be. This is B here. Can be synthesized from an aldehyde. Name the isomer of compound B and the aldehyde. Well, it has to be a primary alcohol. So if B, if we're naming B, B was propane 2 ol, therefore the alcohol has to be propane 1 ol. Some people do it one propane ol, I don't really mind. Or you can just leave it out to be honest if you wanted to. So propane 1 ol, I'm just going to put the 1 in it. Um, just to show you um, where the OH group is going to be attached. And therefore, if it's going to be converted to an aldehyde, so this is the alcohol, uh, this is the isomer of B, and therefore the aldehyde is going to be propanal. And that's going to be the aldehyde here. Make sure you just state it, okay? Uh, although it's um, aldehyde, H-Y-D-E, if I can spell. Okay, and um, a lot of students have it very messy on the page, so just be careful that way. Okay, so we have our isomer and we have our aldehyde. It asks for you to draw both of those. Okay, so very simple. We draw in our propane one also, so that's going to be one, two, three. OH group goes at the very end. Put in our hydrogens there. Hydrogens, hydrogens, hydrogens. Okay, so that's going to be our um, isomer. So I'm just you know what, I'm going to write it underneath this here. So that's going to be propanol. Pro, sorry, propan one ol. And then over here we're going to have our aldehyde. I'm just going to draw it side by side. And the aldehydes are easy to draw because the CHO has to go at the very end, that's where the functional group is, has to be at the very end. Okay, and again, if we're naming it, it's going to be propanol. Okay, so we have our names there and our drawings. Okay, so how does it convert? Okay, so how do we get an aldehyde basically? So how can the aldehyde, oh, sorry, I'm going to be, um, I'm going the wrong way actually. How can the aldehyde be converted to isomer B? So we're going this direction. How can the isomer uh, aldehyde be converted to isomer B, which is propyl one ol? Well, it's very simple. Okay, this is a reduction reaction. So it's going to be H two with a nickel catalyst. Okay, so if you want to write it down, you can. Okay, so hydrogen gas, hydrogen plus nickel catalyst okay and that's it um for that one which was, which was quite a lot so look we have a b c and d done now let's have a look at e and 
am I running out of space here? I suppose I am a little bit. It would be okay though. So E. E is all about boiling points. And you're told that A, B and C have boiling points here, but not necessarily in that order. And for each compound, identify its boiling point, justify your answer in terms of interim leptal forces. Well, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just put that over here all together. Okay, in an exam, you'd have to bring it down to the very end, guys. Okay, but I'm just running out of space for this video, so I'm going to do it up here. So, how do we know which of um, these is attached to which of these? Well, it always comes back down to the intermetal forces. And the easiest one to remember is that alkanes and alkenes will always have the lowest boiling point because they have the weakest forces. So, I'll explain why. So, propene over here has to be minus 48 degrees. Celsius. Okay, simply because it has something called van der Waals forces. So van der Waals forces. Okay, um, and they're the weakest by far. Okay, and that's always going to be the case. Now, how do we know which is which between these two? Well, you have to remember for the organic families and their properties. Okay, the alcohols have quite a high boiling point simply because alcohols have something called hydrogen bonding, very similar to that of water, okay? So what's the highest bonding there? It's going to be 82. So we just write it down here, hydrogen bonding. That's all you have to say is the identifying the, um, the intermix forces, so hydrogen bonding. And therefore, our ketone has to be in the middle. And the ketones could be 56 degrees Celsius. And now, for the bonding for ketones, okay, all you have to do is say here that um, they have dipole-dipole forces. And you have to learn these off, guys. Okay, uh, you should know that all ketones have dipole-dipole forces uh, or bonding, whichever way you want. So that's it there, guys, for, um, for those ones. So what I would do is my next video is going to go over the next couple of years uh, and maybe another video after that to do those ones. Um, I hope that helped. Um, a small bit and again it's just repetition really to get these ones um, done out as possible just to collect my videos a little bit cut off in the last one there just to, a reminder here that you just need to learn off the um, the boiling points for um, not the boiling points but the, um, the interim electric forces for these and then you can you can dictate then whether it's going to be um, um, what the degrees are going to be roughly okay hydrogen bonding will always be the strongest okay therefore the highest um, highest boiling points and likewise uh, um, van der Waals forces will always be the weakest okay therefore they're going to have the lowest boiling points so just to bear that in mind so look guys I um, I hope this helped and I'll be going over some more videos in um, discussing organic synthesis, synthesis in the next um, few days